two. All right, what's up, everybody? I'm here with my man, big Nick Buchanan from University of Florida Gators. What's up, Nick? What's going on, Coach? How you doing? I'm doing good. I mean, you got the locks out. We got the pony. You got the vertical ponytail going. Mm-hmm. Feeling good, man. I see you, man. Uh, well, firstly, congrats on a successful career at Florida, man. You know, I didn't see you since high school days, and you went through what, five, four, five years, five seasons at, at Florida, man. So it's like time flies. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. So I mean, how taking a look back on your career, I mean, how do you feel about your whole your tenure at Florida mm-hmm. and you know, what you're doing now, training for the draft. I mean, how is everything going? You got to update us. Um, well, you know, the past five years was good to me, man. You know, I got to thank University of Florida for everything they did for me. You know, um, yeah, I, I feel like I really went to, into a good situation. You know, Florida is one of the best places in the country in terms of the combination you get with academics and football, you know. So, you know, I graduated twice. I graduated with my bachelor's and my master's from Florida. And then I ended up starting my uh, junior or senior year there. Um, so I, st- I started like 20, 20 something consecutive games. So, you know, Florida was good to me. I got a lot of exposure. I got to play in some of the best stadiums in the country, some of the playing for the best fans. You know, it was it was a great time. You know, right now, just preparing for the NFL. Um, just been staying in shape, especially with the everything going on with the COVID-19. You know, I was preparing for Pro Day and the Combine, and all the drill and things like that. But after the virus got canceled, um, you know, things – went sideways a little bit, pro day got canceled and all of, and all of that stuff. So, you know, we had to make a sharp turn, but you know, things are still looking up, still working out, still staying in shape, feeling good, man. So it's been good. Well I mean, no question, I already know, you know, if this is a big opportunity for you and having worked with you before, you, you ain't gonna let nothing stop you, period. You you, you still you you still getting it in. So uh but I mean yeah you played on a big you played on the biggest stage in college football. You played in the SEC for uh a literally historic football program, and you graduated. Well, you came out 2014, right? 2014. I graduated high school in 2015. Yeah, you graduated high school in 2015. So you transitioned from you know high school ball at Dunwoody, then you go down to Florida. What was the biggest transition that you had to make from high school? Not just going into like any college, but you went from high school to SEC. Like, what do you feel like was the biggest like transition that you had to make at that level? Well, well, my first biggest transition was I ran, we ran wishbone triple option in high school. So I had to learn how to run a college style, pro style offense, you know. So that was, that was the first biggest transition. We was, I, I had never even known what an inside zone was or outside zone was, you know, or, or slide protections and, and man protections in the past game. I didn't know anything of that, anything of that sort was. So that was, the, that was the first transition. But then just, you know, getting that competing mindset because, you know, in high school, you know, you compete every day, but you're the best, you know. So, so you got to learn that in college, you're going to take your lumps. You're going to get beat down sometimes. But the biggest thing is to, you know, get back up and make sure that you keep competing. And that's all coach wants to see is competitiveness. You know, you, they want to want to be the best. So if you want to be the best, you got to go out there and show it every single day. So that was one of the big, that was one of the bigger, that was one of the bigger transitions because, you know, you want to go out there and compete, but that's what, that's everyone's job. So you got to go out there every single day and you can't take anything for granted. You know, you got to, you got to stay, study your, get in your playbook, study the film, and then and go execute on the field every single day. So really just, again, adjusted to that new grind of a whole new whole new type of whole new type of atmosphere, you know, or a whole new type of group of people that you're around. It's probably one of the biggest transitions. Almost definitely. And I would say that you succeeded very well in doing that because, you know, <clears throat> as, as we got to the end of your tenure here at Florida, you became like a team captain. And, you know, this past season you were on the Remington Award watch list and stuff. So, I mean, let's talk about that, you know, coming in as a novice and then, and then making that big transformation to actually a leader where you had you, you go from being mentored to being someone who mentors on the team. You know what I'm saying? What is that what is that whole process like? Like showing the new guys, you know, how this works and the ins and outs of the program. Well, well, one of the biggest things that helped me was I've always been a playbook guy. You know, I've always been deep into my playbook, trying to learn exactly what's going on with with the plays. I just try to learn what I'm doing how to do it and, and more importantly why I'm doing it. So once I learned those three once I learned those three things, you know, it was easy, especially because we had a coaching transition um after my third year. So really my eyes started getting open to football once we got the new coaching staff in. And we were running the, we were running similar plays, like almost the exact same plays, but just hearing the plays being described in a totally different way and, and, and mixing and matching and getting and getting 
really knowledge from I had three line coaches, so so combining all the knowledge I had from three offensive line coaches while I was at Florida really helped me to hone in on my playbook. And once I knew what was going on, you know, able to play fast, play physical, play aggressive. And, and and once I was able to do that for myself, you know, it was nothing for for me to show like my teammates how to do it. You know, show little things that that may that they might not be able to understand, and I understand and help them out so they can excel as well. That's what's up. Give me one second. I'm gonna pause the uh, the interview real quick because this dog is like one second. All right, sorry, I'm back. Just had to put the dog back. Um, but Chad, so you got you went into the the whole mentoring role as going from a true freshman into you know a, a registered senior and you mentor these guys, and I'm sure you learned some some great lessons along the way. But now we're talking about a whole different journey. Now we're getting ready for you know the biggest stage so far in your in your athletic career, which is training for the league, you're training for the NFL. But with that in mind, this is probably one of the most unique experiences that you'll ever have two ways. One, you're preparing for the big stage. But number two, we got this whole COVID crisis going on right now where you don't have access to, you know, a, a facility that you might have been able to go through in the first place and you can't even travel. And it's like you're not even in Georgia right now. You're in Florida because of, you know, the whole travel bans and stuff like this. How has this whole process been as far as getting ready for that next level in your training and, you know, what type of limitations that is put on your journey? Well, the biggest limitation that I had was that I, didn't, I wasn't able to get the exposure in my pro day that I was expecting. You know, that's one of the things that as I talk to teams now, you know, they wish that they could have gotten to come see me, make sure I was healthy, meet me face to face, you know, ask me real questions face to face rather than, on the phone call over FaceTime. But besides not getting a pro day, you know, nothing's really changed, you know. Um, you know what you have to do as an athlete, you have to work out, you know what I'm saying? You have to eat the right things and take care of your body. So I've been able to do that. I've been investing in myself, you know, trying to find different ways to to help speed up my recovery process to the training rooms and things down here closed. You know, I bought a couple, I bought a massage gun and I bought um, some tens units, you know, trying to uh, stimulate my muscles for recovery and things of that nature. Stretching is big, you know. But other than that, you know, you find you find a place to work out, find a place to get it in, and you get it in. You know, there's no shortcuts to it. So, you know, I know I know what I got to do, so I just do it. Most definitely, most definitely. And uh, kind of backtracking a little bit, um, back to your experience at Florida. You got some athletes who come out of high school and they really excel collegiately, like they do really well. Like you got some, you know, they go in there, they great their freshman year, they get better their sophomore year, all the way up and through their senior year, and then you have some guys who kind of go and then just kind of level off. Like, they don't really take that next step as far as, you know, reaching their fullest athletic potential. What kind of, you know, mindset did you have coming to play in order for you to keep getting getting better, like, every single year? Because you got better every year that you were at Florida. So, like, what was it that kept you going? What, what put you – what kept you in that mindset? <clears throat> well, you know – the biggest thing is, like, what coaches say is, honestly, like, you can find something to get better at every day, but you're not going to get better at something every day unless you physically and mentally take that step towards it. So whether you're in the weight room and you know I want to lift five pounds heavier today or you're on the field and you know oh, I got to get this step right on this one play or, or any time I got this route, I'm going to run it perfectly. You know, it got to be one thing. And after a while, you know, all those days of you getting better, and getting better, you know, you go out there and say, I'm not going to mess this up. And so the next day you do it, and you just pick that one thing. You don't have to get everything right in one day. You know, you just pick that one thing that you're going to master today. I'm not going to get this step wrong. I'm going to make this throw every time. I'm going Every time the running back comes out of the backfield, I'm going to stick with him on this play because he's in this formation, so I'm going to know this. And then the next day you move on to something else. So every day you got to pick one thing to get better at, and that really helps you and helps you stay on track because, you know, you're doing the same thing every every day, every day, every day. You know, sometimes you're, it's hard to – sometimes it's easy to trick your mind into getting complacent and things like that. But, nah, every single day you got to find one thing to get better at. Absolutely. And, you know, aside from the mental aspect of being an athlete, going through that level of comp competition in, in college, there are thousands, you know, of – off, high school offensive linemen who are either getting ready to play in college or who have that desire to play in college. You came in and you were a dominant offensive lineman for the University of Florida for years, for for two, three years at a time. 
what piece of advice do you have for that high school offensive lineman who wants to play at the next level and not just get there, but wants to excel? What do you tell them? Um, the biggest thing that I would tell a high school offensive lineman right now is that you have to know what you don't know. And so when I say that, I mean, when I say that, I say that to say a lot of kids are scared to ask questions, you know, oh, I don't know what to do here, so I'm just going to go block this guy. Or I don't know why I'm doing this, I'm just going to do it anyway. You know, you got to know every single thing that you're doing. You got to know what to do first off. If you don't know what to do, you can't be on the field. You got to know how to do it, and that, that comes from taking coaching. And you got to know why you're doing it. You got to understand the scheme, what you're doing. So if you don't do all those three things, then there's no way that you can be successful. Because if you don't know why you're doing it, then you don't know – then, then, then in the game, if you see something that you didn't see on film, then you might not know exactly what to do, you know, because as offensive linemen, as the game evolves and as you evolve in, into your position, you have to think it's about more mental than it is about brawn, you know. Of course, you have to stick in the weight room and get big and do all those things, but, you know, that comes with football. You know, that should go without saying, the, 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 the physical part of it. You should want to be able to grind and go out there and do those sprints and get in the weight room and get better. You know, that should go without saying. But I think what's really going to set yourself apart when talking with coaches and when, and when trying to reach that next level and, and even go beyond that is really understanding the mental part of the game and really becoming a student of the game to, to, really, to really further yourself as an offensive lineman, especially. Most definitely. And so looking back in retrospect, when you were going through the whole recruiting process and you signed with Florida coming out of high school, is there, what, what does, because hold on, 22? 22. 22. Twenty-two. So, what does twenty-two-year-old tell? What does twenty-two-year-old Nick Buchanan tell eighteen-year-old Nick Buchanan coming out of Dunwoody right now? Um, you made a great decision. I mean, you know, of course. <laughs> I mean, because even even back then, I, I knew I wanted to to, to I, want, I wanted to go to college. I wanted to graduate. That was the first thing, and I wanted to play and win the biggest stages. And and coming to the university, I don't want. I'm not trying to like sell or recruit to come to the University of Florida, but you know, that's exactly what I, that's what I wanted. You know. Because Florida is a top 10 public university, so it's a great degree, you know, especially ringing through the southeast, you know, you know, job opportunities are endless coming through, coming out of the University of Florida. And then, of course, you know, the, the, the football pedigree as well, you know, three national championships, you know, you're going to have games on CBS, national television every year. So it was everything, it was everything that I wanted it to be, you know, I ended up, I didn't play my first three years, which was tough, because, you know, I thought I was going to come in and, 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 and really, you know, dominate, do what I did. But, you know, you got you to gotta stay down and wait your turn and, and really understand really understand why the guys who are playing are playing because the game is totally different. Practice, college practice is 10 times faster than high school games and college games are 100 times faster than college practice. So you got to really understand that it's, it's, a, it's a big transition we're going out there to compete with the best. And when you go to a school like University of Florida, the, the stakes are high. So, you know, you got to take every single rep seriously. You can't just go out there and, and do good sometimes. You got to do good every single day. So that's really one of the biggest things that it took me to realize, but, you know, looking back on it, you know, once I realized that it was really, it was really a no-brainer for me to get out there and get what I needed to do. So I really feel like I made one of the best decisions for me. That's what's up. Uh, that, that's, that's deep. That's heavy. And then with Doma, Florida now, what, what would you want your legacy at the University of Florida to be? What is, what is, what is the, the Nick Buchanan legacy like? What do you want to be remembered for at Florida? Um, I just want to be one of the, I was probably one of the hardest working guys on my team, you know, and a, and a great teammate, you know. Um, more than anything, uh, I just love the guys that I played with on the offensive line, you know. Of course, playing that center position, I, I was the voice of, of, the, of the entire offensive line position, you know. I'm telling guys what to do, where to go, what to double team to, and, you know. It was great just seeing some younger guys coming up. I got to, I got to lead, and, and it really showed the way because, you know, when, when I was signed, when I signed to the University of Florida, we signed – eight offensive linemen in my freshman class. So, so the veterans were, were, were far and few in between. You know, we had, some, we had some guys that we looked up to, definitely that helped me out along the way. But, you know, I feel as though once we got the depth and once we got more offensive linemen in there, it was really good to see, to, to see how, how a veteran who knows what's going on, who, who really cares about the younger guys and really understands the ins and outs of the game and how to respond to coaching and, and what to do in the weight room and how to go about things and how to take care of your body. You know, I really feel as though, I left them guys in a good place, so I'm excited to see what, see what they do in a few years, and hopefully, hopefully, they look back and they they look about what I taught them, you know. And they, and they look and see you playing on Sundays, right? That's what's up. Now, just for the record, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go way back right here. 2013, 
summertime, there's this kid who comes in to my training facility. He's, uh, he, he was, I don't know, 14, 15 years old at the time, maybe 6'1", 6'2", 240 pounds, just this lanky dude, and he talks to this coach, and he's like, yeah, I play lacrosse, and I play, I play D-line, I play offensive line. What did that coach tell you from day one when he met you, just, just for the record? You told me I was gonna be an SEC offensive lineman. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. But uh, you think so? Hell yeah, man. <laughs> they were, sure, man. I'm like, I'm like so like ridiculously proud of you, man, and all the work that you put in over the years, and to see you like mature into like a young man, you know, an athlete, and what you're going to be. I'm telling you right now, like what you're doing right now is nothing compared to what you're gonna do, and not just football. You know, football is just a window of life. You do great there too, but what you what you have before you in life, man. But I'm really proud of you and to see how you developed over the years. You literally like one of the first athletes that I got the privilege to work with, man. And so I'm happy to see how things are unfolding for you. And I'm glad that you had such a successful career under your belt at Florida, man. And I'm, I'm looking forward to, to hearing the news, this draft coming up and you putting in all this work, man. But I thank you for taking the time and, and coming on and, and talking with me and sharing your knowledge for these kids because they need to know and parents. Oh, yeah, appreciate you, Coach. You know, appreciate you for training me, you know, throughout the whole process and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I had to get right at WPT, you know, <laughs> a good place for all, for all the high school athletes to go and get right if you're trying to really get out of college, you know. So make sure y'all go make sure y'all go grind with my dog Armand, man. I, pre- I appreciate the plug. I appreciate the plug. So, sure. But thanks again, man. <laughs> Keep doing your thing. Get back on them. Um, get, get back on that R&R video games. Do what you're doing, man. And um, we'll, we'll be in touch here soon. All right, Coach. All right, man. Best of luck with everything. Yes, sir.